Thank you for joining us on the Winning at Selling podcast. I'm Bill Hellcamp of Reach Development Systems, and with me is Professor Scott Plum of the Minnesota Sales Institute. Did you make a list of New Year's resolutions? Is it difficult to stick to multiple resolutions? It's easy to get fired up about a grand idea for the first 30 to 60 days of the year, then run out of steam. Perhaps your good intentions faded into the background as you got caught up on a to-do list, but not this year. Listen up to a new strategy that will carry you through the entire year as Bill and I welcome Danita Bai and discuss three ways to wire your brain for successful selling on episode 551 of the Winning at Selling podcast. Well, I'm looking forward to this conversation with Danita and we are not going to have book club as when we have guests, we don't do the book club because we want to give them the full time. But next week, we'll be back into our book, What Great Salespeople Do, and we'll be on chapter four. So, Scott, why don't you introduce Danita? I'm really grateful that Danita has um, committed to spending some time with us. I've known her for multiple years. I'm, I'm not going to say how many because that might give it away. But uh, I was just reminiscing the first time that I saw her. And since then, she has earned an MA in leadership and sales development. She's a Forbes Coaches Council author, Harvard Business School MBA sales coach, and a TEDx speaker on millennial leadership. Her book, Millennials Matter, Proven Strategies for Building a Next-Gen Leader, is one of the best how-to books on motivating and managing emerging leaders. She's been published in Forbes, Huntington Post, CEO World. She is also a mother of three millennials, has five fantastic grandchildren, live at the Triple T Ranch country in North Dakota, loves Minnesota and speaks, presents, and travels globally. She is world famous. Grateful to have you, Danita. Please welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. I'm honored. We'll have fun today. Yes, yes, we will. And our listeners will learn a lot. So tune in. Got a couple of questions to just kind of start off the conversation. And I, I mean, you are one of the most seasoned sales trainers in the state of Minnesota. So I'm going to give some some background. Danita is one of the leaders in the state of Minnesota when it comes to sales training, along with Jill Conrath and Terry Slattery. Both, all three are, have had a tremendous influence in my career because I was introduced to them when I was in my 20s, and they've had a tremendous impact on uh, my career, on my beliefs. Very powerful, as Danita will share. Our beliefs are so powerful. And one of the things that I think is really important is coming to wiring your brain for successful selling. What does that really mean when we talk about wiring our brain for successful selling? So... Uh... Thank you, because uh, Jill and Terry have uh, both been um, incredible encouragers uh, to me along the way. As you mentioned, uh, I don't like to, to make New Year's resolutions because uh, as a high achiever, I always want to achieve my goals. And so I hate it when I miss it. <clears throat> Instead, the practice that I've developed is to have a a key theme for the year. And so my theme for this year is gratitude. Mm. And it was, uh, it was interesting as I was uh, coming up with gratitude, I was also cleaning out some old, old files from Xerox Corporation. Oh, yeah. And uh, I found a, a, a three by five card that I had uh, posted next to my telephone, that I had posted in my car, that I posted in my bathroom, that uh, I had posted everywhere. Uh, and it was a principle that came from a classic book from Dale Carnegie, How to uh, Win Friends and Influence People, which is, you know, if, if people haven't read the book, it's a classic, but it's worth it. And here was the principle that popped out to me. Don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, for me, especially as I was starting out, but actually uh, it's all the time that 
in the world of selling, we are obstacle after obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. I mean, it's like an endless supply of obstacles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I can't criticize, condemn, or complain, that's about 50% of my conversations. Now, the heck am I going to talk about, Danita? Well, that's a good point. So what, <laughs> you know, what what do you talk about? And so um, I had developed as a as a young salesperson, I had developed a practice that um, after every sales call, whether I thought I was brilliant and had done something amazing or whether I thought it was the absolutely worst call in the entire world. And I was embarrassed. Um, I would take some time to, and it doesn't take long. It's maybe 60 seconds, maybe longer, Uh, but I would take time to look at what were three things that I did well. And uh, so in doing that, I was, Uh, in a way, giving myself a pat on the back. And I was um, operationalizing gratitude for the skills and the acumen that I had developed. So that was the first thing that I would do. And then I would follow that up immediately with only three things that I could improve on. Mm -hmm. Good. The way that sometimes high achievers are wired, um, Well, I have found salespeople can do two things. They can list a hundred things that they did well, and then don't look at anything that they could improve on. Or there's the other group of us that we can think of a hundred things that we did wrong. Yikes. And then we uh, deflate ourselves. So it was a discipline to me, three things that I could improve on. And by using the words improve on, I was again acknowledging that I had made progress on my journey and I was indeed growing and I, and I was um, encouraging myself to keep growing. So as I think back on that, um, that practice uh, that it really, I was using gratitude to continue to wire my brain and my mindset for success. I think you also then looked at it realistically, right? I mean, too often, as you gave the the two other examples, everything good or everything bad, we're neither of those things, right? We're not all good or we're not all bad. And and if that's all we're focusing on, we can't improve because either there's no chance for improvement because I'm so terrible, I can't improve, or I'm so wonderful, there's no need for improvement. But mm-hmm. if we look at both sides of that, one of the, the the visions I always had is when I look at my students or the people that are in classes with me, I think, you know, these people are 90 to 95% doing things right. What are some small things we can help them do better? But let's not beat ourselves up because we're doing many things very well. We're just looking for those few things to get better. And when we balance it, like you say, three things I'm doing well, three things I'm doing poor, I could do better, then we're looking at life a little realistically. And it helps to develop some uh, clarity uh, as we're moving forward. Mm-hmm. So thank mm-hmm. you. I, I love the approach on gratitude because you really do focus on the positive sides of it and you want to carry that forward. Um I remember I, I was doing a class and Danita was in the audience and I, and this was 10 plus years ago. And I said, when you debrief a call, think about what you did good and what you, you, you did bad. And at the end of the class, Danita came up to me and said, let's reframe that a little bit. And let's say, what did you do good that you'll continue to do? And what do you need to improve on? So if our listeners like some of the content that I've shared with you, I have learned a lot from Danita over 10 plus years of listening to her. And it's, you know, Scott it's never says that about me, Danita, you know, well, I, I haven't known you that long, <laughs> I, Bill. I mean, <laughs> give, when you're in the 10 plus year club, I will start <laughs> recognizing you more, but you know, I want you to be able to have the determination and commitment like Danita has for 10 plus years. He knows that if I, if he, he gives me any compliment, I'll take it too far. So, <laughs> but uh, it's so important to concentrate on the positive and yeah. these days it's so easy to get discouraged. And I mean, salespeople can beat themselves up. They they suffer from a high need for approval. They want to be liked. I mean, there's all kinds of things that salespeople do on the belief system that hold them back from being successful and really challenging a prospect to change. And if you don't challenge them to change, you won't be able to sell them anything. 
And um, it's just, I just really want to stress that importance of, of gratitude um, when it comes to debriefing, because you got to focus on the positive these days. Yeah. So you mentioned that, and I think that's important. What, what other things do you do then, Danita, to, to wire your brain for success? What are some of the other practices that you employ? Well, that's a, uh, that's a great question. I, I'm in the process of writing in a full article series on this. So I've got action steps that are continuing uh, <laughs> to bubble up. Uh, my one this morning that I, uh, I talk about often is uh, that we want to bookend our day with gratitude. Mm. So, um, so the moment that we start to, you know, our brain starts to wake up, our, you know, eyes start to, to flicker open, uh, to think about um that this is a this is a good day i have breath uh i'm alive uh i have a um a little orange sticky on my computer that says what are the good works that are laid out for me mm. what might i do to make a positive difference i have breath what might I do to make a positive difference? So to be able to bookend, you know, to start the day with that. And then also at uh, the end of the day, to be able to fall asleep with being uh, grateful. And what I do personally is I have a little journal gratitude. So I list out um, eight things that I was grateful for during the day. And uh, many of us may know that as we sleep, um, our brain is doing lots of work of processing the day. And so as we're going to sleep, let's think about those things which are positive mm -hmm. so that our brain can keep uh, wiring for success. There's a um, uh, uh, both of you may be aware of an um, author named Carolyn Leaf. Uh, she's written a book called um, A Switch on, uh, I think it's called Switch, Switch on Your Switch Brain. On your brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she has a, a visual that is just, uh, was so impactful for me. Uh, uh, on one side of the visual, she has a tree that's dead. And then on the other side, she has a tree that's, you know, full of leaves and life and fruit and is uh, abundant and it's flourishing. And that she talks about we have the choice to make by the thinking, by the thoughts that we feed our brain on whether we're going to have a flourishing tree a flourishing brain, mm -hmm. uh, one that is creative and innovative and problem solving, or whether we're going to have this tree and brain that kind of withers, withers. It, I mean, it's just, it, it's sad what, what, what we can do to ourselves by only grumbling and complaining. Mm. These so are, that's one practice. Yeah. And I mean, you're getting into best practices and I think all salespeople are taught best practices, but they don't apply them. They don't leave the room and exercise them the first opportunity that they have. What really holds them back from exercising those best practices? Well, there's um, um, uh, two things, maybe three things that we can talk about. Uh, the first is, uh, that I believe our culture, our American culture, is actually wired to be a finger-pointing, blame-gaming, uh, victim-oriented culture. Uh, you, uh, you know, you, uh, you watch uh, any media, whether it's social media or um, uh, legacy media, they're always pointing fingers. Um, 
Scott, you had mentioned uh, about objective management. The research by objective management says that 60% of salespeople um, have a tendency to blame the economy or the client or their boss or something else for their lack of success. Only sixty percent. I'd put that at eighty or ninety from based on my experience. I, but that's all right. I would agree with you based yeah, on my yeah, experience. True. The other thirty percent lied <laughs> to the to the researcher. <laughs> well, and, and I think the reason that I um, that grat- gratitude has become important for me is I have a tendency to become part of the sixty percent. Mm. I have a tendency to do that. Yeah. You know, I think about kind of some of my long-term dreams and goals and, you know, and I, I actually have a favorite excuse. Uh, my, my favorite excuse is my husband. No. Oh. You know, my husband. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gordon. Um, <laughs> so poor Gordon is right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so I have to catch myself and, uh, um, you know, to be able to, turn myself and that's a very very counter cultural thing to do because we we get it every single day mm. um so that's one thing that makes it uh, it difficult is that we're uh, bombarded with this victim mentality uh, i think another one that's uh, can be difficult uh during this time is um, I think we live in a fear-based culture. Mm -hmm. Um, I was talking with someone the other day and we were talking about some things that were happening that were really good. Um, And, and then she said, but what do you think about those balloons? Oh, geez. And I'm like, what in the world do balloons have to do with our topic? And yet it it seems like there's this low grade fear that's happening in our culture. And there's a a quote, there was a comment that popped out to me by a Dr. Mark McDonald that I thought was great. And I I, I wanna read it. Mm -hmm. He said, when fear is the predominant emotion, it overpowers every other feeling. It overpowers love. It overpowers hate. It paralyzes the rational faculties. Mm. It makes it impossible to think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we think about our culture, we have balloons this week. Who knows what we're going to have next week? You know, there's always something going on that to... um, to, to one, be very watchful about what we let into our brain in our life. And then I also believe that gratitude helps us to counter fear. So gratitude helps us to counter grumbling. Gratitude helps us to counter fear. Now, now Danita, you, you've done a book on millennials and obviously the younger people are the more they seem to be really attached to the social media issues. And it's not just TikTok, but it's everything. We're just bombarded. Now we have this device we can carry around with us and get totally absorbed in whether it's whether somebody friended me or whether I got enough likes or, or whatever. What do you think that's having an effect on our culture that is saying, you know, let's look for the negative. Let's look at the terrible things, and 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 that maybe we're kind of wired to look for the negative. Where you know, you said that you you tend to want to blame Gordon, but I think we all want to blame somebody else. And our ability to only focus our input of social media on those things that we already agree with are now kind of pushing us further and further away from each other and from a logical look at the world. That's so true. Um, one of the, so I, gratitude is my word of the year. So uh, I started out the year uh, on a 
social media and news fast. Mm. I was going to do 30 days. Uh, you know, and I, I'm addicted. I'm pr- addicted to news. I don't want to say addicted, but I mean, you know, I love the yep. news and what's yep. happening. And I, I love to hear about the balloons and what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, uh, you know, a discipline in a practice, uh, you know, I went into this uh, fast and set aside my phone. Um, I, you know, I had a practice of checking uh, social media just one last time uh, before I shut the light out. Uh, and I thought, mm-hmm. you know, no, we have, um, I need to take some ownership to be able to um, wire my brain for success. Yet as we move into, there are many economists that call this a era of exponential change. Uh, there is change that is happening at a breakneck speed. And in, or I believe that in order for us to, to really um, thrive and to be wise leaders during that time, that we need to have a, um, uh, that, that we need to be grateful, we need to be positive, we need to be innovative, we need to be creative. So it invites us uh, and challenge us to take mm-hmm. additional ownership. There was uh, something else that you'd mentioned about the um, isolation. Well, I serve on the North Dakota State Board of Higher Ed. Um, so there's some additional research on what's happening with uh, college students. And in a, a recent survey, uh, 71% reported a loss of social connection. said that their anxiety uh, and depression was getting worse. I'm going to counter that with, uh, and um, uh, Gordon and I recently um, had a, uh, a trip to Costa Rica. And while we were there, we visited a blue zone And uh, if you Google blue zones, there are five places on earth where people routinely live to be over a hundred years old and are healthy. So I thought this was interesting. So of course, you know, we ask, you know, what, what are the top tips to live long and be healthy? And here's the first one, strong relationships with your family and community. Hmm. What a stark contrast between what social media is doing or the the way many of us are interacting with social media, uh, where we're actually isolating ourselves and then contrast that to best practices from the blue zone that talk about the importance of relationship. And we're coming out of a government mandated time a year and a half to two years of social isolation, which had to affect all of us in a negative way. We are wired to be in community. So, so with that in mind, how can, how can we, or what groups or associations should we be looking for that can give us this more positive, grateful view on life versus what we're getting from social media? That's a great question. I actually haven't, you know what? I'm going to have to put that as an action step. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, one of the things we like, and Scott and I are both members, and I know you've spoken for PSA before, mm-hmm. but we're finding it very hard to get younger people and many people to come back to meetings in person that it's so much easier to stay behind our computer or just ignore things. And, and yet, the vibrancy of the the 25 or so people that we're getting together on a monthly basis is great and very positive and very affirming and really nice people. And so for me, those kind of associations are very important, even though I'm even reluctant to want to go to them because it's easier to not, but it's not better for us. Scott, any other mm. thoughts that I, you I have think on that? There's a, a real lack of mentorship 
I think, in our, our marketplace and with salespeople. I don't think that mentorship is as popular as it was 30 years ago. I mean, I, I mentioned that, you know, I was in the audience when Danita spoke to me 30 years ago, and I looked at Danita and, and the others that I mentioned as mentors that have had a tremendous impact on my thought and, and my words and my actions. And with that, I get a different outcome. And we don't have as much mentorship right now. We don't have the role models. And the role models that people do pick seem to have numbers on their jerseys. And yeah. and they're not people that have had a tremendous impact on society and lives and, and our overall well-being outside of people that are in entertainment. And unfortunately, our society gravitates more towards what feels good, what's popular, than what is right. And it's one of the things that I struggle with is when I do a program, it seems like more people want entertainment than education. And if I'm going to be educating them, they've got to recognize some self-awareness that what they're doing is probably not the best way of doing it. There may be other options. And when you don't have people in your life that are giving you other options during the practice and behaviors of a common day, then you're not getting a different result. So you don't gravitate towards doing things and improving. Our listeners are people that want to improve. If you're not listening to the podcast, you don't want to improve. You're perfectly happy with what happened yesterday and you'd be grateful for what happens tomorrow. But is it going to be any better? We don't know. We really don't know. But, you know, I, I think a lot of this, you know, deals with stress and the blame game and, and, really working on, you know, rewiring our brain, like, like we talked about, you know, as the topic of the show is, so how do we rewire our brain to reduce stress and increase creativity? Like you said, Nita, the brain is thinking at night and being creative. And I know salespeople do this every single day. They go to bed with a problem and they wake up with a solution because the stress is down, the creativity goes up and boom, we got it. Eureka. Right. Now I can go back and have this conversation with this person, but it's only because I want to grow and change. So I have to have a commitment to grow and change. If I don't, game over. I don't, yeah. What, what? yeah, absolutely. You know, Scott, we had, as we're talking, I had mentioned that there's, uh, you know, three difficulties that we encounter. One is we have our culture, which is a, a victim-oriented culture mm -hmm. that it's easy for us to fall into. One is, I believe we have a, a, a I call it the fear pandemic. Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, is continuing to uh, impact us. And then the, the third area, um, which you've mentioned, and I know that you work on a lot on this show, it's just our own mental thought processes. And there was an experience. Um, I had a, I mean, I really work hard to be a positive person. So there was an exercise it was a fill in the blank exercise and we had to as quickly as we could fill in um you know i'm not uh successful because uh and there was a whole list of questions like that and then i could not believe what i wrote down mm. uh, i i wrote down you know i'm not successful because you know, I'm not as funny as um, other people. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not as smart as other people. Hmm. I'm not. And this list went on and I'm like going, that is, it's trash. It is. It is. And so, um, so it's interesting because I, I also do that exercise periodically just to see what else I need to be working on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, the process that I, that I use personally is that I'll list out the lie mm -hmm. and then I'll, um, that's in one column. And then in another column, I'll list out the counter truth. And then I will typically take those lies, kind of tear them off. Uh, crumbling them up and burn them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Good practice. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a kinesthetic learner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I burn them. Um, but even then, you know, even once I go through that, um, being aware of, you know, whether it's need for approval or 
uh, emotional involvement or dealing with, you know, uncomfortable dealing with money, whatever it is, um, that I, even after I go through the process of identifying what the lie is, um, getting truth, I still have to work at it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely. Well, this I'm is developing the per, uh, you know, the, I'm developing new neural pathways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been a great conversation. We're running uh, to the end of our time. Any last thoughts, Danita, that you want to leave us with? I believe the selling profession is the best in the entire world. Uh, selling to me, me is all about personal leadership. And it is an incredible profession to help us continually inviting us to be better people that can uh, serve our clients and make the world a better place. Mm. So selling, I believe, is the best profession in the entire world. Yeah, I'm a little totally. biased. I'm sorry. Totally <laughs> totally well, we all think so too, right, Scott? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's my identity. It is my identity. I'm so well, grateful that you joined us, um, Danita. Um, I'm kind of curious, what book are you reading right now or who's had the greatest impact on your life? That's kind of my normal questions that I ask all of our guests. So I am in the process of going back and reviewing uh, Dale Carnegie. Mm. You know, as I mentioned, um, you know, my um, uh, don't criticize, condemn and complain. Uh, there's a, a another one of Dale Carnegie's books is um, how to stop worrying and start living. And uh, he has a, a practice that he talks about early on in there where you take, you know, things that are worrying you that are thinking about and uh, you put them in a box outside your bedroom. outside your office you put them somewhere else and you put them in a little container and you give them boundaries um and uh you know i've been uh thinking about that and actually have written a a children's story for Mm. my eight-year-old grandson who had the last time i went to visit him he had all these negative thoughts running through Mm. his head wow and i thought hmm I need to start training my grandson what to do with all the negativity and to live a life of gratitude. Mm, Wow. Terrific. Terrific. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. I know that Danita has some resources that she's going to be able to uh, make available to our audience. So we will link that on the show page. Some great ideas like five success mindsets to create breakthrough results Uh, millennial sales motivation, millennial sales coaching. So she's going to make all those available to our listeners. So look on the show page, uh, show 551 for that. As we conclude, we do have a gold nugget. I knew that Danita was going to talk about gratitude. So mine is from GK Chesterton. When it comes to life, the critical thing is whether you take things for granted or you take them with gratitude. So how we look at the things that come into our lives Is it something I deserve or is it something that I have gotten uh, and I should be grateful for? So Scott or Danita, your thoughts on that? You know what? I'm writing that. I haven't heard that one before. I'm writing it down and I'm making a meme and a poster out of it. All right. We'll send it to you. We'll we'll, we'll trick it over to you. So excellent. GK Chesterton, fabulous story. For those of you who have not heard of him, uh, it's worth taking a look at. So like Bill said, everything we talked about is going to be at winningatselling.com, episode 551 with Danita Bai, and we'll have some resources for you. And next week, we're going to go back to our book, uh, which is What Great Salespeople Do. We're going to be on chapter four, and our topic is going to be, what is your client worth? So that should be an interesting conversation. So thanks, everybody, for being with us. Go out and get better one skill at a time. Joyful selling.